Back in the good old days of SRN, State Registered Nurse Education, this was me with a group of my colleagues as third year students. That was um, two years before the world ever heard of the word AIDS. Ten years later, I moved to St. Mary's Hospital in Paddington in 1989 to work on an HIV ward. St. Mary's Paddington is famous throughout the world for so many um, healthcare pioneers, not least Sir Alexander Fleming for discovering penicillin. But also it was one of the leading lights in caring for people living with HIV and AIDS-defining illnesses. We had two inpatient wards and routinely we'd have about five to ten people dying every single week on both of those wards of AIDS-defining illnesses. So when I moved to London to work at St Mary's, um, I worked there as a junior staff nurse because I'd been out of nursing for 10 whole years. I'd spent seven years studying to become a Catholic priest and then worked as a priest in parish life for three years. Then this incident happened. It may sound a bit like a funny story, but at the time it did tap into stigma, prejudice and discrimination. I signed up at a local GP practice and was seen by one of the young female doctors there who took me on as a new patient at their service. She did all the usual things, taking my blood pressure, pulse, weight, look how thin I was in those days. Um, she did all of that and wrote that on my medical notes. But then things seemed to change. She wrote down that my occupation was as a male nurse, and with a name like David Thomas Evans, then I'm surely I could only have been a male nurse. But I think this is quite a loaded term, especially back then, whenever people referred to male nurses, there were always, or often, some implications within this. And things got worse, because she then added that I was a male nurse working on, and in very big letters, she wrote AIDS ward. The plot thickens because she then changed the colour ink of her pen and she wrote in huge letters underneath, GAY, followed by some exclamation marks. Now, at that time, I didn't actually tell her that I was gay, so she made an assumption there. Um, maybe because I was a male nurse and working on an AIDS ward, as she had so clearly written. Over the decades, of course, uh, lots of gay people are now happy to be out with our identities and no need to conceal them as we used to in the past for fear of what may happen with prejudice and discrimination. Even at my local pub, um, most of my mates refer to me as BGD, Big Gay Dave. Many years later, after that time working at St Mary's, um, I was with a different GP practice and the elderly GP was just retiring and she said, David, look, I'll never see you again. Would you like to see your medical notes? So I said, yes, please. And when I look back, that's when I first discovered all that the GP had written on my notes during my time at Paddington. She asked me if I had any medical problems with being gay, to which I replied, no, none whatsoever. So at that point, she tore up that page of my notes, threw, the, threw it in the bin, and said, this information does not belong in your notes. The reason why I was so concerned about it at the time is that this was the typical questionnaire that we all used to receive back then from any life insurance or mortgage companies, asking us if we belong to any one of these so-called AIDS high-risk groups. As a gay man who's never had uh, unprotected sex, I can honestly say I'm not a homosexual man in an AIDS high-risk group. But what makes my blood boil about that incident is that if I had answered those questions saying no, and then if an insurance or mortgage company had written to my own GP asking the same questions, they might have looked at my medical notes, seen what was written from Paddington, and they might have said yes, at which point I would have been denied life insurance and mortgage. And the problem is that you then asked another question. The question they may ask is, whenever you apply for new life insurance or mortgage, have you ever been declined before? If so, why? 
and this is why so many gay males in particular used to dislike revealing their sexual identity um, and orientation to their GP practices because of the discrimination. That should no longer happen after a joint communique between the BMA and the Association of British Insurers. You can check out the agreed guidelines, but basically what they're saying is now that insurance and mortgage companies have no right to ask whether a person has been tested for um, individual incidents of sexual infections, HIV or any of the hepatitis. Um, all they can ask for is whether a person has had a positive test result to HIV, hepatitis B or C. Here's one link to the guidelines if you want to check it out. I hope you've enjoyed this story. Thanks for listening.